Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about cirrhosis. So what is cirrhosis? Cirrhosis is the diffuse nodulation of the liver which is due to fibrous bands which divide the liver into regenerative nodules. So this is the gross appearance of the liver. Normally the liver is very smooth, has a glistening surface. However, here in the cirrhotic liver you can see there are nodules present. So what are these nodules? These are regenerating hepatocytes which are surrounded by fibrous septa. We will discuss in detail how these are formed. Now firstly going to what are the defining features of cirrhosis. So cirrhosis is defined by three main morphological characteristics. First is the bridging fibrous septa. How we will say the liver is cirrhotic? So firstly there has to be bridging fibrous septa. This septa can bridge from portal vein to portal vein or can bridge from portal vein to central vein or central vein to central vein. So this is the first criteria. Second is the presence of nodules. So this nodules why are these formed? These are formed as a result of hepatocyte regeneration and scarring. Now what happens is due to any chronic inflammation, the liver, uh, the hepatocytes, they die. And uh, due to this chronic inflammation, there is ongoing fibrosis which is taking place. So hepatocyte, they regenerate, then there is fibrosis. Because of this all, the nodules are formed. So now the next criteria is very important that the whole of the liver, the entire liver should be involved by this. The disruption of architecture of the entire liver should be there by the fibrosis and nodule formation. Uh, any focal injury which is associated with scarring, that does not con uh, constitute cirrhosis. If entire liver is involved, then only cirrhosis is said. So, going to the normal physiology of the uh, liver then we will go to the pathogenesis so what is there there is a portal triad you know then there is a central vein you know then there are pods of hepatocytes okay and then there is a sinusoid now portal triad it constitutes of bile ductule then there is a portal vein and then there is hepatic artery so this is portal triad and then there is a central vein so connecting them there is a sinusoid which is lined by discontinuous endothelial cells now endothelial cells, then there are hepatocytes and in between there is a space known as space of DSA. This space of DSA is a particular importance in case of cirrhosis because the space of DSA contains some uh, cell known as telate cells. So these telate cells are responsible for fibrogenesis in cirrhosis. Also kuffer cells are there, kuffer cells also play a role in cirrhosis, we will see that. Okay, now going to the pathogenesis. Firstly, the type of collagen present in case of uh, normal liver is type 4 collagen is present in space of DSA. However, in case of cirrhosis, the type 1 and type 3 collagen are present in space of DSA. Therefore, there is uh, these collagen, they create fibrotic septal traps. Uh, the type 1 and type 3 collagen normally are present in liver but they are concentrated in the portal triad and portal tract and central vein only. Okay, so going to the stelate cell, we already, I already told you that stelate cells are in particular responsible for the fibrosis. So in case of any chronic inflammation, we will see how the stelate cell get activated. Though uh, what happens is there is proliferation of these cells and they convert themselves into highly fibrogenic cells. So how does they activate firstly? So activation of the uh, stelate cell is due to many things. Any chronic inflammation like hepatitis, then kuffer cells can produce cytokines and chemokines due to which they can be activated. Then due to disruption of extracellular matrix or direct stimulation of these telate cells by toxins such as alcohol, such as some drugs. They, these are the ways by which stelate cell can get activated. Now what does stelate cell do? Stelate cell uh, converts itself into myofibroblast, it uh, increases fibrogenicity and then there is fibrosis. Okay, now when there is fibrosis, when there is deposition of the collagen in space of DSA, then what happens is, as you already understood, in, uh, in, uh, there are two things, huh? there is space of DSA and here there were endothelial cells. Okay, 
sinusoid and there were hepatocytes okay so when there is fibrosis so there is loss of penetration of the endothelial cells the endothelial cell cannot transport easily now the, there is uh, this is known as capillarization of sinusoids normally sinusoids are lined by endothelial cells which are discontinuous but in this case the discontinuous is loss which is known as capillarization of sinusoids therefore this impairs the function of sinusoids to uh, easily permit the exchange of solutes between the hepatocytes and plasma so this is the one number one reason why there is metabolic dysfunction in case of cirrhosis then going to the kaffir cell how kaffir cell play a role kaffir cells and lymphocytes also release certain cytokines and chemokines which increase the activation of stellate cells which are further involved in fibrogenesis so the cytokines can be they can be tgf beta there can be certain metalloproteinases so these can also play a role in uh, cirrhosis now here you can see there are two pictures this is the normal liver this is in cirrhotic liver so normal liver there are hepatocytes then there is space of desse there is stellate cell there are endothelial cell you have kaffir cell this is all normal and here in the cirrhosis you can see there is stellate cell proliferation you can see over here there is hepatocyte death which is going on and on, uh, along with that hepatocyte regeneration will also be taking place there is activation of the stellate cell which leads to its uh, conversion into myofibroblast then there is fibrogenesis which is taking place the kaffir cell if gets activated it releases many cytokines it can release tgf beta it releases pdgf this all leads to uh, like pdgf pdgf what it does is it uh, helps in multiplication of the stellate cells these are the growth factors so they can help in proliferation of stellate cell also so all by this there is increase in fibrogenesis now because of uh, this chronic process of liver damage fibrosis there is cirrhosis and the surviving hepatocyte they will try to compensate they will try to regenerate themselves they will try to proliferate and by this what happens is they produce nodules but these nodules are confined within the fibrous septa which is ongoing so as a result you can imagine what happens is the net outcome is a fibrotic nodular liver in which the delivery of blood to the hepatocyte and the transportation is severely compromised therefore in whole the liver cannot function properly so this is the uh, pathogenesis going to the classification of cirrhosis it can be classified on the base of morphology morphology micronodular uh, cirrhosis can be there if the nodules which we already discussed they are less than 3 mm micronodular if it is more than 3 mm and in many cases it is, it is mixed also then going to etiology etiology on the base of which uh, things can cause the cirrhosis number one it can be alcoholic liver disease a very important cause then viral hepatitis can cause then certain biliary disease this alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency then there is something known as cryptogenic cirrhosis cardiac cirrhosis indian childhood cirrhosis and in many inborn errors of metabolism the cirrhosis can a patient can land up in cirrhosis certain drugs can also lead to cirrhosis so this is the mainly the causes of cirrhosis now going to the clinical features in clinical features we are not discussing in detail the clinical features because mainly i wanted to discuss about the pathogenesis so clinical features generally they are patient will complain of malaise fatigue anorexia weight loss specific due to loss of the liver function patient because liver is involved in protein synthesis patient can have ascites because of low protein uh, in the serum then impaired biliary secretion can lead to jaundice there is impaired uh, nitrogen metabolism which can lead to hepatic encephalopathy we will discuss this in uh, uh, another video uh, also impaired estrogen metabolism can lead to patient complaining of gynecomastia testicular atrophy now going to the complications uh, of the liver cirrhosis they are portal hypertension now portal hypertension can further lead to ascites splenomegaly and esophageal and gastric varices this is in whole a different topic i would like to discuss it in a separate video then liver failure can also result because of cirrhosis which will further lead to coagulopathy because liver is involved 
in production of many coagulation factors, then hepatic encephalopathy, hepatorenal syndrome, hepatopulmonary syndrome, photopulmonary hypertension, then hepatocellular carcinoma can also occur in certain patients of cirrhosis and around 2 to 8 percent of patients they can land up into hepatocellular carcinoma. Lastly, going to the gross appearance of uh, uh, liver in case of cirrhosis. Now, uh, grossly normal, the liver is very smooth, it has a glistening surface, but in case of uh, cirrhosis, as we already discussed, the uh, appearance of liver, it has nodules, the regenerative nodules are present. If it is micronodular, the size will be less than 3 mm. However, if it is macronodular, the size will be more than 3 mm. Okay, so this is a case of micronodular cirrhosis and uh, chronic alcoholism mostly leads to micronodular cirrhosis. Now going to the histology. So in histology you can see there are, uh, we will, what we will find is firstly we will find there will be thick bands of fibrous tissue. So this fibrous tissue can uh, land from portal vein to portal vein, it will be bridging type. So portal vein to portal vein, central vein to portal vein or portal vein to central vein. So this type of bridging fibrosis you can find over here. This this is fibrosis. Inside it you can find nodule. This nodule is of hepatocytes which are dying, which are regenerating. So this is that nodule. Also you can use special stains to see the fibrosis such as mason trichome skin. We will see the fibrous bands are very clearly demarcated by this stain. So this is how cirro uh, histology of the cirrhosis looks like. So this was all about cirrhosis. Uh, we will discuss the complications in next video and uh, certain about certain uh, clinical features also. Do like, share and subscribe to this channel. If you like this video, ask any queries regarding this topic. Thank you.